Picture this. You've just woken up and you find yourself upside down in the car that you were driving. The last thing you remember is that blue semi crossing over into your lane. You find out later that neither your brother or your mother made it, and the only thing you have left is your pain. Picture this. You're 13 years old, and it seems as if you're more responsible than your own parents, as they would rather pawn your bike for a couple pills instead of dinner for the table or money for the bills. Picture this. You're on your last strand. Enough is enough, and you finally decided to take your own life. So you trade the pin for the gun. What's done is done. Where is God during these times? How can he be good yet allow such things to happen? Well, this is a question that has plagued humanity for most of time, but it is important to know that before you can understand God's goodness, you have to first understand God's character. You see, because too many times we want to blame God for the bad things that happen, right? Because we don't fully understand who he is. Psalm 116, 5 through 7 says, For the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted, and when I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. The Bible clearly shows us here that God's character in itself is good, so why are we always hung up on whether that's true or not? Well, here's your answer. Your perception of something is often formed around your experience with it. For instance, I can tell you all day that God is faithful, but what's your experience with faithfulness? I can tell you that God is gracious and kind and loving and that he is good, but what's your experience with goodness? What I'm trying to get you to understand here is that if the way you perceive goodness is distorted, the way you perceive God will be distorted also. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't always have it easy. I grew up with divorced parents, both of which found most of their happiness in the next high. I remember the domestic abuse and the useless excuses as to why they never were where they said they'd be. I remember the pain, the loneliness, and the hurt I felt in knowing I was always number two to the drugs and number one to nobody. But in the midst of it all, the one thing I remember the most is wondering, where is God? If he was so good, then why did I feel so alone? If he loved me so much, then why didn't he just give me to a family that would? But here's the thing. Through the struggles and the hardships I faced, I learned a couple things. First, I learned that it was never God's intention for me to grow up in the environment that I did. His ultimate plan and purpose for my parents was not for them to be addicted to drugs, but because he loved them so much, he gave them that choice either way. Second, because of this, I also learned that one of the things that makes God so good is that he can take any problem and every bad situation and bring something great out of it. And third, I've realized that your perception of God cannot be based upon what you've experienced in the world. Because we live in a place where we're not exempt from pain or hardship. So if we choose to view God through the, world, the, through the picture the world has painted for us, his character and his intentions will constantly be changing. However, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means that if God was good during your success, he has to be good during your struggle, right? If God was good on the mountain, he's got to be good in the valley. If you remember anything today, remember this, that if God was good yesterday, he's good today, and he is good forever. Not only did I learn how good and faithful God was through it all, but he also revealed to me exactly where he was during every single one of my struggles. So if you would, one last time, picture this with me. You are a man who is accused of much, yet is guilty of nothing. However, you are spit on, beaten, whipped, and forced to carry a cross you would later be nailed to and crucified on. At any moment, you can stop it all, but you don't. And you don't because of me. Because I needed a way out. I needed love and comfort and grace and peace. And because of you, I found exactly what I needed right on that cross. So the next time you're facing what seems to be an impossible situation, just remember those thorns were broken on his skull so you'd never have to be. He took holes so yours could be mended. He finished your situation and your struggle when he took that last breath. And just like he never left that cross, he will never leave you. Because that's who he is and he is good.